Arch, do you want to talk about why you don't like early access games and why Cork Keeper is good or bad? Or Yeah, game? no, it's absolutely amazing. I, I got around to getting it and trying it out because I've seen people playing it, but I didn't pay much attention. And I, I was talking with a mate and we were like, what game should we play? And he's like, oh, I saw Cork Keeper. So we got that. It's been so long since we we, we, we we hit a period and we're like, okay, no, this is a good po- point to take a breather. I'm going to go get a drink and I'll come back. And you go to get a drink and you sit down and you realize it's 5 a.m. And you've been playing for the past seven hours. <laughs> and I absolutely love it. I love Core Keeper. It feels really good. It's great as a multiplayer because that, that really does feel like people can take on roles and such and i've always loved that but it's so limited in terms of content and this is where my personal grievance with early access game games come comes when you jump into an early access game and you fall in love with it and you play through all of that content i i kind of find it hard to come back you know um, and when they, they update it later and there's, there's more content and, or, or, or something and I go to play it and it's just, you've still got to slog through that first chunk that you've already done. And to me, that's always been a struggle. And that's why I struggle with early access games because, you know, it's like getting the demo for a game, playing that to death and then being like, Oh, I'm so, you know, I've already just burned myself out on the game. So the full game, (laughs) I kind of find myself unable to fully enjoy. And, you know, that's happened with a few times. Um, My time at Porsche was one that did it to me. Um, uh, Kinseed uh, did it, but I'm slowly getting back around to that. But uh, yeah, I can see this happening exactly with Core Keeper as well. Basically, I've enjoyed the 16 hours I played with a friend, but, you know, we're kind of sitting there and going, if more content comes out, I can't see us diving back into it. And yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's just a me thing when it comes to early access games, but when I want to get into a game, I want to play it start to finish and the whole content and just be like, okay, that was great. That's the chunk. I can't keep coming back to a game and getting drip fed the content which he says after playing stardew valley and admitting to playing it for (laughs) however Mm -hmm. many years it's been out but yeah it's just very strange and like i loved core keeper but i honestly can't see myself like jumping back in and starting from scratch when more content like more future content for it drops it's definitely not just you I have the same feeling. Same. So, because you were not playing it on stream, right? You were just playing no. it with a friend off stream. Correct, yeah. Yeah, I've got the same thing. Like, Prison Architect, for example, was one of those games for me. I I bought it super early on in Early Access, and I played, like, every update, and it was amazing. And then um, the, the longer it was in development, the less I played it, and version 1 was out, and I just never played it again. If it's a game yeah. that I stream, I mean, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll play the early access when early access drops, and then maybe one or two big updates, and then when it releases as version one. But just for me, I just, nah. I'd rather just wait until the game is finished and then play it. There absolutely, that is for me as well. There are games that I've bought in early access as sort of like, no, that's going to sit in my library till it's done. Yeah, yep, I have same. those. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to play devil's advocate on this for a second here. I find that there's a particular style of early access game. And I, to preface this, I have no interest in Core Keeper. I I don't like that style of game loop. Um, But there is a certain type of early access game for me that I actually prefer to (laughs) full released games. um, Because it gives me a reason to go back to it. If a game releases and it's 1.0, I can sit down and play a game for 40 hours and then forget it exists and move on, right? Which realistically is probably what's going to happen with Shattered Pixel Dungeon. But a game that releases in early access 
and has meaningful updates at not as super frequent cadence, but like a reasonable cadence, um, I will end up putting significantly more time into it than I would otherwise and often end up enjoying the game a lot more. As an example, I've been playing uh, like 60 hours of Caves of Cud once every eight months for the past four years. Um, and I'm just going to continue doing that because every time they put out a major update, it changes the game enough and adds enough new stuff to the game that it's a reason to go back. It's like getting an expansion pack for a game that's finished that you love. Um, I, so I, I wonder I, if that's like the key there it's you know <clears throat> releasing on early access you have to release content often enough to keep the people playing going and keep the people coming back because like caves of cud is a roguelike correct mm -hmm. so every time it doesn't it doesn't matter if you've loaded it 10 times that day or not for 10 months but if you're playing a game that has a story and progression, if you get through the first three or four chapters and then 10 months later, chapters five to six drop, mm -hmm. you either got the option. If you start again, you've just got to play through all the content you've already played through previously, or you load up a save where you don't remember what's going on. You, you're, you're not in that, that flow state. And that's jarring. So I think that, yeah, like when it comes to roguelikes, when it comes to games that you can sort of just launch up and go like that, there's a very different feel to versus games that have a stronger sense of progression. Yeah. And, and I get a sense of progression from Core Keeper, um, you know, especially the way that, okay, getting copper, getting tin, getting iron, fighting those bosses... I see content that comes out being set after those bosses, which means when you start, you have to get copper, get tin, get iron, fight those bosses. And that's a significant time investment. It's not built around quick replayability that that sort of carries that vibe. It, it, it's funny that you say that because I've seen Valheim kind of run into similar issues. Like... I, I know a Absolutely. few people that have stuck with Valheim, um, but at, those people are very much the minority, and those are the people who play Ark Survival Evolved for three months, mm -hmm. and there's an update. Then they play Next Game, or uh, I don't know, Rust for three months, and then they play Valheim for three months, and then they kind of circle like that. Like Those are the people who are playing that still, um, but kind of the mass audience that was playing it initially just has stopped. There so are... it's kind of funny... I'm just Sorry, going to interject because, yeah, um, like, I 100% agree with both of you. There are certain genres, if done well, early access is amazing. We all know those early access games that have just been, either in early access, they had so much content that you could just play, like, bajillion hours of it. Like, for example, Dyson Sphere Program. My What's first playthrough... Story? of Dyson Sphere program in early access was like 70 plus hours. That's a lot of content for early access. All games that come out with a limited scope, but every time they add an update, there is more stuff to do and it complicates things and there's a new system introduced. Like for example, RimWorld, Oxygenaut included. But all of those games share to some extent what type of game they are. They are sandboxy games where you make your own story, basically, or you make your own challenges or whatever to progress through the content. I agree 100% with you. Core Keeper, for example, I touched it because I streamed it. My community enjoyed it. I will not touch that game until it comes out again because I'm sick and tired of early access and incredibly slow development. And... It's just, I'm just getting to that point where I have early access fatigue, in a way. Yeah. I think, um, like, Kinseed is a fantastic example, I think. Because it's been, like, what, f four years now in early access? Kinseed's been a very slow development. A long time. Yeah, yeah for that example. That was also, like, purchasable on their website for Before, a yeah. while. Yeah. Yeah. One... Yeah. 
One thing to their, their credit, though, and this is something that always stuck with me and probably, like, argues to the power of social. I tweeted that I was debating between a couple of games to play on stream. And um, Kinseed actually replied saying, you're probably better off waiting for a little bit longer for, for Kinseed so there's more content. And, you know, I always thought that that was great. But, yeah, especially, like, with Kinseed, because that's one that I keep coming back to going, how's it going? And mm. it's just sort of sitting there, you know, you can see development work is on it, but it's just so slow. And yeah. um, Valheim had the same issue. Oh, yeah. 100%. Valheim was amazing and then took a over a year to release the first actual or was it a year or was it nine months to release nine months, the I want to say. Yeah, actual content piece. And, you know, you can understand small dev studio. They kind of got absolutely blindsided but it shouldn't take nine months to to be putting out next content you know if regardless of whatever you're doing if whether you're a hit sensation or not early access is not oh we'll put it out and then we'll get around to updating it it's it it needs to be constantly updated and constantly feel fresh they they did do a bunch of seasonal events in Valheim. I think the problem with Valheim was that it there's the early access uncovered a bunch of like unex I I think unexpected errors and issues with the way they built the game and also the way the player base played it, which made them have to rebuild a large chunk of their engine. I think that kind of threw a wrench into their production queue. But like I, I don't disagree with anything you just said. <laughs> Completely agree. Yeah. And I think um, also something that um like the wider gaming sphere is also a thing like people have been burned so much by early access as well that it's really hard for people to like lean into and trust a new game in early access like yeah. i will always i know i will always if i if i actually go and buy an early access game i want to make sure that before i do that I get a sufficient amount of hours out of a game that I don't feel burnt by the price. Like, if it's an early access game, but I play it like Destiny's Sphere program for 70 hours, and I spent like what, 15 pounds on it, so like $20, that's fine. That's, that's, that's great value. That's awesome. I had my fun with it, and then I can move on, even if it, if it were to never get finished, which is not the case with DSP. I'm just bringing mm. it up like as a game that has content, but. Um, I have played early access games that that were an engine demo. Like, yes, you could it, run around, yeah. you could swing a weapon, maybe could have a harvest, like, I don't know, do, like, two quests, and that was early access, and it's like... There, there are early access games, yeah. and then there are early access products with a plan. It you, sounds yeah. to me like, like, you know, always pay for what the game is. Yeah, don't, not what it wants don't, to don't, be. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like like I said, I, I've admitted to buying an early access game because in the future it'll be something that I want to play. But even still, that's like, you know, um, things like uh, Satisfactory. You know, I bought that in early access because, one, it was great, but two, because I knew that updates were going to come and it was going to be great. Divinity? But there's also early... Sorry, no, go ahead. Yeah. I, didn't want to, I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> no, that's fine. I was just going to say, there's always ones that you buy that turn out disappointing and just haven't mm. gotten the updates that they either deserve or they promised. The first and, game... Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we clearly have a lot to talk about, so blind, go ahead. Please. <laughs> okay, I was just going to say two other... Or another style of game that I don't think any of us here have mentioned that I think works really well in early access is like Colony Builders, like... Rimworld, mm. because uh, I, I, Dwarf Fortress has been essentially in early access since 2006. So, like, it's still Alpha 0.5. Uh, Songs of Six is a game that I've apparently put 70 hours into, which I hadn't realized, which I put about 30 to 50 hours in every major patch. And Rimworld was a game that I put 2,000 hours into it before it hit 1.0. Yep. Like... I, I think the only one out of all of those games that I've really played a lot, the only two out of all of those games that I've really played a lot of that like didn't stick, maybe three actually, is Starmancer, Space Haven, and um, 
Mm. Uh, King Under the Mountain. But King Under the Mountain is just too bloody early, unfortunately. And yeah. Starmancer and Space Haven, neither of them really grabbed me very much. Yeah, but to be but even fair, those, I still got a good time in them. I'm going to say something that's going to get me lynched. Go nuts. Colony builders are just long form roguelikes. Well, they're not you know? <laughs> roguelikes. They're colony builders. Um, they're no, small scale yeah, yes, key builders, sir. I, I'm talking. I'm talking a game Replay that sense? you have to be willing that at some point you're going to lose it all, and you're going to start again from scratch. Depends you on know? if you're saving that and loading. But yeah, it depends on if you're saving. It's so much fun. Yeah. yeah. No, it's that- not. The, the biggest really? thing that has burned me out of RimWorld is early game. Well, that's because RimWorld really? doesn't want you to have fun. I like that the most, to be me honest. Me too. No, no. Yeah. There is a reason why I am in mid to late with the hot potato, because I don't like the early game. The early game to me, in all colony builders, this, this is not just RimWorld, the early game to me is the incredibly boring part. I love getting to the point where you need to look at optimizing and you need to look at preparing for the final push that is the part that i really enjoy and yeah like i have debated because you know um i stream rimworld almost exclusively for a year i think we've all had that phase here um i've debated going okay i want to play a colony off stream build it up to the point that i'm actually in that bit that i really like and then go from there because the start of it and the start of all colony builders to me are the most boring bit. Completely opposite. Like I have had streams of RimWorld doing um like naked and afraid on the ice sheet. And they've been it's been eight hour streams of just starting over, and that was like Probably one of my favorite like RimWorld experiences, just starting over and over and over and over and trying to survive with your poor little naked person on the ice. So, ah, oh. yeah, I feel that. I really <laughs> like starting over. Yeah. Oh no! It just it 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 it, it <laughs> gives me the the unpleasant shivers. You should, Arch. You should just play Dwarf Fortress. Join me in the dark side. No. Build I'll, a giant I'll wait fortress. And- and then build another I need, giant fortress, and then go back to the I first giant graphics. fortress and visit it. I and need art. Just, just go and just go install the tile set. Fatalinger's tile I'm set has he- more pixels than the official one. I'm not here to play the Matrix. It's got seven thousand <laughs> sprites in it, dude. <sighs> but okay, I just Join- watching you play the Matrix is like that scene. From the ma- uh, watching you play Dwarf Fortress is like that scene for the Matrix. Yeah, blonde, redhead. If, if this was a video yeah. podcast, I'd stand up and leave. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, my, right. my biggest issue with current Dwarf Fortress isn't even the ASCII art. It's the UI, and that's why I'm waiting for the Steam version because the UI is gonna get a get a lift, get a facelift. I'm looking forward to that. Can I just ask though, who here is secretly afraid that when, you know, when we play Dwarf Fortress, Blind's going to be sitting there raging at us for doing it wrong? <laughs> no, I think he's going to rage in quiet. Why would I rage? Does he <laughs> rage in quiet? So I'm already the know. one who plays Dwarf Fortress weird, and I'm aware of this. <laughs> like the community Actually, rages think- at me for the way I play it. <laughs> Because I don't I think Blind's gonna be just hack. It's just really happy that we're all playing it then, even if we have to wait for the C version. I just yeah. wanna see more than a hundred people watching Dwarf Fortress. For his birthday we should just all stream it. <laughs> I mean, for my birthday you should raid me because I will be raising money for charity like I do on my birthday every year, but streaming it's also an option. And I'll probably well, we be using a tile set that's you. just a picture of my face again. That was a nightmare flesh fortress. You want to see Dwarf Fortress be unplayable? Take a picture of your face and use that as a tile set. No, thank you. God, that sounds like a torture dream. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. What were we talking about? Right, video Early games. Early access games. Um, but no, I, I actually have, I, ha- I actually also have to say something and uh-huh. 
still about early access games. Fun fact, this is just a fun fact. The first game I ever bought in early access, I got super burned by. Uh, who remembers Starforge? Um, so that was you great. Bought, I bought Necro. Hmm, I bought That's Star not Forge. even available anymore, I, although I don't think Starforge is either. Starforge isn't either, no. And the funny thing is with the Starforge uh, devs, Code Hatch, they, they, they released exist. that, aban abandoned it, took it off the Steam store page, and then they did it all over again with Reign of Kings. The next Isn't Reign of Kings 2 out? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe? <laughs> and oh, then the I actually, I've just checked. I have Starforge, and I've played 20 minutes of it. Oh, I, I played a bit more of it. On oh, no, Ray of Kings, you can apparently still buy. Surprisingly. I didn't know that. And can... the, the, that developer put out that other game, Heat, which looks kind of racist. But that's besides the point. Mm. Oh, that one. Yeah, true. Um, what else I wanted to say? Um, games that don't really work in early access, in my opinion at all, are story-heavy games. Like... Yeah, um, Early access visual novels. Divinity Original <laughs> Sin 2. Like, I bought that game as soon as it came out. Didn't play it until it came out. Like, full and full release. Because I, I, I wanted to support the developers because Divinity Original Sin was amazing. But I, I'm not playing through the story over and over and over again to get to the new bits and whatnot. I played through all of the content in the original early access release of Proteus in November 2020, and I'm not going to touch that game again until it hits 1.0. Yeah. Because I, do I with, don't want to play yeah. one new level in an FPS game once every three months. I just want to that, blast through that whole game in a day. That's what I do with that's what I do with most early access games that I touch on stream. I play them once when they came out, come out, and then I jump back in when they're actually hitting 1.0 release because you're li you're like the sommelier of um i probably mispronounced that the sommelier of uh early access games you know you swirl them around you inhale them and there's ah okay that's a nice early access game that can wait until it ripens and yeah. then put it down and, and then wait till it comes back and then enjoy the full rich body of or weep at what it has become. Except for War Tales, huh? <laughs> I was about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally starting it. I was like, how do I War Tales that I really disliked. And FG comes back to, like, every month. I don't know. FG, no, 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 that, that's, no, that's a thing. Myself. Yeah, that's a thing. Um, War Tales, for me, I know I know some people here didn't really like it all that mm, much. It's fine. We'll blame But, like, um, War Tales, for me... Is one of those games where everyone is different. You make a new group and you make you do different things. And the thing is, I actually for the new because it had a new update come out with a whole new region. Um, level cap is raised. Um, there are animal skills now. They can learn things. You have new things that you can place at the um, uh, at the campfire. Uh, new skills, new enemies, um, new factions, uh, new recipes, like like a bajillion new items, like a lot of stuff. And I actually went back to my very first group that I did, that I played the majority of my time with, which is like, I think by now, 50 hours. That's a lot of, first of all, that's a lot of content for early access. And I still haven't done everything that you can do in that game, in that one save file. And um, it, 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 that War Tales for me falls into that into, into that type of game where so far each big up like I mean this is the first big update the other one was just a quality of life update um, it gives you enough good stuff to sink another twenty thirty hours into the game because yes I've played this now the the new the new stuff for like twelve hours ish thirteen. I have seen a fraction of the new area and I've I'm like three to four levels away with my dudes from like level cap and all that sort of stuff like this is one of those games where each update is so significant that it's worth to jump in again also fast because the game came out in December had a quality of life update in um, uh, late December and now three months later then first big DLC with 
Oh, uh, not DLC, sorry, update. With new area and loads of new things. And, yeah, so I don't know. Wh what I'm hearing is, is there the, um, the early access done right that we're yeah. talking about versus... Yep. But then, to be fair, it is also a, 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 from a developer that I ha that I that I that I m mostly trust with their games. <laughs> and well, it's a developer that's done multiple early access games in the past. They have a track record. They have a track record. Uh, one of them, I don't think, was very good. Uh, but they, they have other games that are uh, that are good. Yeah, but it was more of a we call this now done, and then we kind of a little bit. Sweep it under the rug and look, oh. new shiny game. <laughs> In a way, it's not abandoned. It's not abandoned. We just finished it. Exactly. Yeah. Differently. It's just finished poorly. Like I mean, it's still a yeah. it's still a track record. You know. Right? Yeah. Like, no. No. What uh, James Eck has to started making it had a breakdown. Bon appetit. 